So ladies and gents, you find me on the banks of Boddington Reservoir. Really big expanse of water and there's loads of carp in here. And when I fish, you know, a few matches over the winter on this venue. The reason I've come today is because I fished a match a couple of weeks ago and I felt like I left it, I left it quite a bit in the water. I know I should have done a little bit better. I actually drew a new peg up in the Santra, peg 107, and it had only just been cut out in the week previous. And I'm getting to my peg, I really fancied it. The only problem was there was quite a few reeds under the water, about eight to 10 meters out, which meant that hook, landing any hooked fish was gonna be a problem. So tried to think about it, found a couple of sticks, waded out, placed those sticks in the, in the margins, sort of eight meters out, put my landing net on there, and I thought that's perfect. So, you know, I'm gonna be a hero if this works out. Unfortunately, the day didn't go to plan. I felt like I chucked a little bit too far. I felt like I didn't do enough with my bait. I mean, my setup was fine. I'm really happy with my setup, but it was only sort of like two hours to go when I finally had my first bite, my only bite. I'm actually sitting up the bank, race down the bank, lifted up a six, six pound fish, which is small by Bonington standards. It led me a right merry dance under the reeds in front of me. But we got him in the net and actually that one fish was quite good points in the section. The chap to my right had two fish and then everybody to my left blanked. So you can see it's quite hard fishing. The reason I've come back today is because I felt like I almost went through the motions a little bit on that match. I've put micros around a hybrid feeder, small boilie on the hook or a couple of discs of bread, chucked it out, waited for, waited for bites, which, which is fine. And I know that's gonna catch me a few fish, but I just thought there's a few extra things that I could try differently. So today, Pellet wise, instead of just using micros, I've come with a mixture of mixture of sizes. I've got micros, three mils, and also some four mils all soaked up there. And I'm hoping just that mixture of sizes, you know, in that little parcel of bait is gonna give the fish a little bit more to think about, hopefully confuse them, and also just hopefully, you know, get a couple more bites. Next thing I've done to these pellets is give them a massive glug of flavouring. I've used the complex tea from Dynamite. It's actually a carp flavouring yeah, that the big carp boys use. I like it. it's really sweet and um, quite nutty as well. And I think flavouring on these carp venues are massive. A re uh, the, you've got to have them in your armoury now because the fish are getting so used to seeking out standard carp pellets and they've seen it all before. So on the day, on the match day, I put a bit of flavouring in, but nowhere near as much as I thought I could have done. And with the water being so coloured, I felt like I needed something extra just to attract a fish to my parcel of bait. So that's another thing I've done, which I think are two major differences. The second thing that I've done, um, although I'm sitting on a different peg today, is I just want to see how close in I can actually catch these fish. I felt like I chucked over the fish when I was up in the sanctuary. The fish that were caught um, were caught at sort of 60 metres and I ended up chucking 80 metres, which although it's a big distance, it's not a long distance when it comes to Boddington. Lots of people are chucking sort of like 100 metres occasionally. So I want to just see today how close I can actually catch these fish. So I've started off at 50 metres and then I'll just work my way out. So that's the theory anyway. Let's see how it goes. Another classic Boddington bite. This will be fish number three. I'm still at 50 metres, but <laughs> I think maybe because there's a big wind on it today, catching a little bit shorter than normal. Feels a nice fish as well. Just, I'm really happy how it's going actually because I've had bites now that's been in the water for I always stop watch it that's been in the water for 16 minutes first two were well the first one was 20 minutes second one was 11 minutes 16 minutes so sort of waiting over 10 minutes for a bite but I don't mind that five fish an hour, four fish an hour was massive here. 
I mean, sort of 10 to, 10 to 14, 15 fish is enough to win the matches. And something I'm really happy with is I'm not overpowering it with all that flavouring. I mean, I gave it a massive glug. I just think with the water being so coloured, it just helps the fish find the bait. Obviously, they're not feeding by sight as much when it's this coloured. You can usually give the fish some sticks. I've got a size 10 on. It's brilliant fishing because obviously the bites are brilliant, the fish fight like stink and the beautiful fish as well. The average size of fish is probably about eight pound in the in the lake but on this damn wall there's some massive fish. They're catching plenty of double figure fish in the matches you know up to, you know up to and around 20 pound. Something I don't know whether you've seen as well is obviously you're waiting so long for a bite your concentration can't always be on your tip, especially when you're fishing a match and you've got a few lads around you and you want to have a chat. So I always set the drag nice and slack and obviously if you do get a bite, you're not going to lose your rod. Obviously this, has got a, this reel's got a quick drag so it don't, doesn't take a second just to flick it round and you're playing the fish properly then. It's quite shallow close in so And I see it, this lake about a month ago was, you probably couldn't have fished this peg because you'd be chucking on the mud. It was that low. And I come, come down and fished it when it was low and you, you could see quite a few rocks and things on the bottom. So you don't want the fish to get too, too close to the deck. It does feel like a nice fish. It's ever so windy today and the wind is bitter. Rare eye fish with a brolly but it is freezing. We've got five pound main line, ten pound shock leader. It's quite a long shock leader. It's I do six arm spans, which is about 36 feet, which means that when it comes to netting the fish, I've got some shot leader on the, on the reel. That is a beauty. Oh, what a hippo. What an absolute beauty. I'll tell you what, if they carry on like that, I'll be happy. Really nice fish. That's definitely the biggest fish so far. So that is two mirrors. I'll tell you what, we'll put him the other way because he's got a funny, funny thing sticking out of his belly there. That's two mirrors, sorry, two mirrors and a common. Mirror number two. So it's still absolutely blowing a gale, but the fish is still having a go. And I'm really happy how this is going. Another fish. The wind is awful. I'm pleased to put my brolly up because it's bitter. Keeps wrapping around me though. Brolly keeps giving me a hug every now and again. But it's keeping me warm ish. This feels like another nice fish. Where well, I've had that double figure fish, that big mirror, and then everything else has sort of been. Oh. I think this one's going up towards the sanctuary. 
every other fish has been sort of between seven, nine pounds, something like that. It's been really interesting, isn't it? I'm well happy how things have gone. Really happy. As always, I just take my time playing the fish. Bites are coming quicker as well. That's eight minutes now, that one. That's the fastest bite time. He's really going for a wonder, this fella. I mean, it's quite shallow out there, so they do have to tear off a bit. Obviously, when it's deeper, the fish tend to plod around. I mean, shallower water, they tend to run away from you a bit. Must have gone 20 metres. And I know we've, you know, we're, we've got plenty of space today. There's no angling pressure on the water, but it's just interesting that I've caught a lot of fish at 50 metres, which is a range that a lot of people on the matches probably wouldn't chuck. So it just shows the fish do want to be... Oh, this wind is terrible. It does show that the fish do want to be closer to the bank. It's just the angling pressure pushing them out, that's all it is. The normal match at Bonington for most people is to start short, then maybe work your way out. Maybe work your way out as the fish sort of drift away as everyone keeps chucking in on top of them. Obviously today we've not had that issue. The main thing that I've got out today is the fact that you almost can't overdo it with that flavouring. Just makes me so wary trying this sort of thing in a match and that's why if you can, I appreciate not everybody can, but if you can get out just for a, even if it's two or three hours like I've done today, it can be massive, it can really help you out. Right, we've just put that hippo back. You can see by the state of Matt, he gave me a bit of a wrestle. But not to worry, it was an absolute giant. Must have been 20 pound, really pleased with him. And I think that's a great way to end the session. While my brolly's still giving me a little bit of a hug, I think we've just got time to run through the kit of use today. First of all, really happy with the bait. These mixture of sizes of pellets, I'm really happy with. Obviously the flavor on them as well. I think it, sh it just proves to me that you, unless you go absolutely crazy with the flavour, you can't really overdo it. So I'm really happy with that. And that's why I've come here today. Kit-wise, you've probably seen it a hundred times. Nice big reel. It's pointless trying to chuck long distances with a small reel. I've got a 13-foot rod, a through-action rod, not a stiff rod. It's a nice through-action rod. It's powerful, but it's through-action. That's ideal for chucking a long way, plus it absorbs the lunges of fish when you're playing them. I've got 
five pound main line on the reel and a 10 pound shock leader. The main line's M-Tech line, really nice line. It sinks like a, it sinks like a brick once it's out there, which is ideal on a, when you're chucking long way because you don't want the toe to affect your line and pull your feeder, pull your feeder along the bottom. Feeder wise, it's just hybrid feeder. You've seen it loads, loads of people are using these now. Got the long stem on it for chucking a long way. Four inch hook length, QM1 hook, and then I've got some of these boilies as hook bait. A little mini boiler, some discs of bread. It does make a difference, but to be fair, I'm not too sure how much difference it makes. It's one of those weird things that I think once one of these big carp come around, that small parcel of bait around your hybrid feeder, I think they're having everything. And as long as you've got a nice light hook bait there that's appealing to the fish, they're gonna have it. So there you go, I've really enjoyed today. And I tell you what, I've learnt loads. I've become really friendly with my brolly because he keeps trying to give me a hug. And I'm looking forward to the next match. Until next time, I'll see you again.